What's going on, y'all? So lit. This episode, okay, hey, how y'all doing? I hope y'all had such a good weekend. I did too. You know, a whole bunch of stuff took us out this week. Oh, girl, listen, tonight was a tonight was a hell of a night for um episodes on this this this, this Sunday. Okay, okay, power had us tripping with the end of that shit. All right, the Game of Thrones. Oh my God, Game of Thrones, bitch! I was gagging. I was fucking gagging. Like, oh my God, you know. The fact that the season finale is coming on next Sunday is bothering me. But shit is about to get fucking real, okay? Dayton took down her bitch, the Night King. The Night King. For some reason, I might just cheer for him, okay? Because that's a bad motherfucker right there. But anyway, then we get this shit with Insta fucking Cure, okay? Insecure. I'm so mad. I'm so glad that they are being renewed for season three. But I am so mad that still they couldn't get like 10 episodes. We still got the basic eight ass episodes. And before you know it, the next three weeks will be gone. And we'll have to wait again for the next season to come on. But bitch, but bitch, this is season two, episode five, hella shook. Okay. And they shook us at the end. And I was just sitting here like, God damn it, Molly. You know, God damn it. Okay, so, you know, the episode, and God damn it, Issa, bitch, all right? The episode starts off with Issa going up to somebody's door, and she's walking up these steps, and it's a different location than what it was in the first season, if you can tell, because... You know, the we didn't we just thought it was a random door until we heard the voice behind the door. You know, she was acting like she was delivering a package and he was like, just put shit on the floor. I was like, but you have to sign for your package. It's all this. He was like, Look, I got a gun, I shoot your ass. Bitch, it's Issa. So you was really gonna shoot me? Listen, it was Daniel, okay? And I'm sitting here like, Oh, new season, new location. Cause y'all know Daniel had the little ranky dank house, okay, in the first season, in the first episode. Um so they come in and they kissing and hugging and all that stuff. And I said, see, didn't we say this shit last week? I had tweeted this shit last week. I said, you know, Issa might as well go ahead and fuck him. You know, since y'all keep playing around, it, that's what y'all going to wind up doing. And sure enough, you know, it's not necessarily a good thing because I don't think she don't want to get back with Daniel. And I think Daniel is going to fuck around and get some feelings. Okay. You know, at one point when we will get there, but. I just hope he does not turn out to be a Tasha type person, all right? Because Daniel waited too late in the first season to get his chance to actually be in a relationship with Issa. And then he got his little feelings hurt a little bit when she said, no, nah, nigga, you was just the itch that needed to be scratched. And, you know, now it seems like, as we saw throughout this episode, he just keep hitting her up for like, you know, either fucking or you want to go here, you want to go there. And it's like, it's the lines about to be blurred. And, you know, is Daniel going to develop more or want start wanting more than just a fuck buddy? You know what I'm saying? We, that's to be determined. But they fucking throughout this whole episode, okay? Um, do fucking North. Regina Hall and Jake from Scandal. Scott Foley. I I just want see that is why I'm going to buy. You need to buy the season or buy the episodes on iTunes when the season come out because they will give you the whole thing about that. Some episodes of that because that's what they did with conjugal visits for season one when I brought it. Shit is fucking hilarious. But anyway, um, she also getting hit up still by uh what Eddie? Okay, Eddie from Neighbor Bay. She was in the, uh, the, <laughs> she was at work and he sending her snaps and stuff and doing all this shit and show me, I, I show you mine, you show me yours. She trying to take a snap of her boobs and here come, what is her name? The one with the glasses, the, the co-worker, the white girl, the, um, mousy looking bitch. I cannot stand her cause she like really, really racist to me. And she come in, she was like, girl, I'm just checking for cancer gross like girl get out of here i said Issa, what are you doing go in the goddamn stall or at least go lock the fucking door okay mind you this is where she get off the phone with her brother her brother has to tell her about herself you can never ever admit when you are wrong because in this whole meeting she had a meeting they were about to do this little retreat or whatever for we got child at her job and um <laughs> patricia said so we coming in on a saturday for free early 
Okay. Patricia was me. Patricia was me. Let me tell you something. All them, her co-workers ain't shit. The only ones that I can stomach and like, actually, is Issa and um Frida. That's it. They the only ones that seem like they got some shit and actually want to do something to really help and not just do it to say that they're doing it. They doing it because they actually really want to. But, bitch, Patricia just be like... What the fuck ever. I mean, whatever y'all go with, I'm gonna go with. But this shit is fucking stupid, okay? I'm tired. I'm ready to go back to bed. You know, let me check my social media. Because every time we see her, she on her phone. She is laid out on this table on her phone, okay? And don't nobody call her out on her shit. But um, they was having this little retreat. And before that, they was talking about how the progress they was making at the school. And, of course, you know... It, Frida was throwing her little side comments in and, you know, little shady marks and whatever. Um, and Issa caught on to her real quick and, you know, she went and tried to talk to her. And her whole thing is she still feels a way about this program working only in favor of the African-American students. And to be quite honest, I am not, you know, some people feel like, you know, Frida should just shut up and just let the shit go. And I honestly don't feel like she should because... Regardless of the skin color, whether she's a white woman complaining about it, she's seeing something that's not fucking right, okay? And like she said in previous episodes, if it was a white person doing what Mr. Gaines is doing, it, every, it'd every be a big uproar. Then you will really want to put that shit down in the thing. But it's like, oh, we got to protect our own, so Issa's not going to say nothing. She needs a win. You know, she's getting all this stuff in. They getting high marks and they getting high attendance now because he's bringing kids in, regardless of the fact that it's just black kids. And, you know, she just wants it to be fair. And I understand that. Not all, you know, white people or other people are racist or think a certain way. And... You know, she was trying to say that you don't have the right to tell a black person this or how to feel or some shit like that. And I was just sitting there listening to Issa like, oh, in this situation, what Frida was saying was fucking right. That's fucked up what's going on and it should be mentioned. But I get Issa's side and I also get Frida's side. And it's like, which side do you, you know, title between? And I can understand and I under and I get and Frida has every fucking right to feel the way that she do. So I'm not upset with Frida. Frida said, "Bitch, you know, I just expected more from you, bitch." Let me tell you something. When somebody that you respect, somebody that you like, you fucking with, family, friend, or whatever, that y'all real fucking close, your mama, your daddy, and y'all got a good ass fucking relationship, bitch, and they all of a sudden hit you with that, I expected more from you. I'm a little disappointed. That shit cuts. I don't give a fuck what you say. That shit cut. Have you sitting there looking like, you can call me a fucking bitch, but then you tell me some, I expect more from you. Okay. Okay. It cuts. It cuts. So, you know, Easter was sitting there stuck a little bit. And I guess, I don't know. I don't know how this is going to turn out. But I do hope their relationship get back on board. We saw when they came back for the little retreat or whatever. Um, Frida didn't want to be her partner. She tried to be Patricia partner, which meant Patricia had to actually do some work. Patricia was so fucking dark, but so fucking real what she said a little bit. She said, she was like, so, um... You know, the student dreams of doing this and doing that. What do you tell them? Dreams ain't real. That's Because if dreams was real, they would be reality. Now you need to get up and give over. I said, wait a minute, Patricia. <laughs> Patricia, a little bit too real. She said, bitch, that's a little dark. She was like, that's fucking life. I said, okay. Okay. You know, and Issa had to go with the Indian girl. And, you know, she just stupid. But she one of those ones that, you know, want to fit into the fact that, it almost seems like she acts as if she's not a person of color. So she just goes with the white people. And that's how she acts at the job. But whatever. Um, so she has to deal with that whole thing. Y'all tell me whose side are you on? Or do you understand both sides with the Issa and Frida situation? But moving on from that, we got Molly. Molly went to the Chicago office, okay? And she was um being, you know, shown around by Lil Rail. And he was just asking... I don't understand how you stay up in L.A. at that office, you know. He said being there is like the reason why he decided to go to Howard, the HBCU, and be surrounded by people that look like him. And she said that's the reason why Solange's album, you know, A Seat at the Table, was still being played constantly in her car because they be trying it, okay. And his whole thing is, why are you still there? And it's not that I want you to come out here, but 
you are a good lawyer and you can find a job any other place that will treat you right. And she was like, her whole thing is, I put four years into this company and I'm not about to let that just go away that easily. And so, you know, she's conflicted a little bit. But I had to give it to Molly because Molly said, bitch, what you want me to come out here with y'all? She was, he was like, come to a city with an actual football team. She said, bitch, the bear sucks. And I said, you know what? I'm from Chicago living here and I can tell you, yep. Yeah, okay. But um you know, that was an interesting conversation that they was having and that was what I was, you know, somewhat on the line thinking when Molly found this whole thing got about, you know, her getting paid less and, you know, doing all these jumping through hoops and stuff trying to figure out and trying to get into this. Why you got to do all that? Just go where your talents is needed, okay? You know, that's one thing that I was thinking. That was one option, okay? If you're this good of a lawyer, start putting in looking for somebody else that's going to treat you and, um, you know, give you the demands or whatever it is that you know, you're looking for, if you really got their skills and stuff like that. So her and Issa, you know, they, she's finally back and they doing some flower arrangement for her mother's, uh, vow renewal. And, you know, she talked about something. She got this hotel in Morocco. It's French for palace. She said, bitch, I'm going to be at Motel C. Okay. And that's French for I'm broke as fuck. And I was like, I'll be right there with you. Okay. But you know, they just trying to get back into the groove of things and um, celebrating her parents' uh, vow renewal. And then talking about Issa going on a date. She got another little date. She said she got another one to put in her rotation, okay, because she got a little text from Daniel. And it was like, who? Oh, my God. So, what y'all doing? It was like, no, nah, we just friends. That's fucking. That's it. It was like, you sure about that? Hell, yeah. I know how to just keep it that way. I don't want nothing more. And I was like, oh, so now you don't want nothing more. Because remember, at first, she kind of did. And they... It was the fact that she was with a boyfriend, you know, but they, she showed Molly who she was dating or about to go on this date with, and it was a Mexican guy, and I just kept thinking like, hmm, you know, you was here for, we see her go out on a little date, she was like, tell me some more about your horchata, <laughs> a little on the chata and more on the whore. I said, listen, Issa and her hallucination side conversations, the shit is hilarious, all right? So fucking funny. I be dying laughing. But I just found it a little funny how you don't want to speak up about the discrimination that is being very obvious that's going on with these kids, with Mr. Gaines or whatever, these Mexican kids, but you about to go out with a Mexican and you want to see him and stay with him and all this stuff and fuck him. You don't want a date like that. You just want to fuck the dick. Hmm, interesting. Okay, and they actually was having a good time, and you know they was talking a while, and they it was like after midnight. He said, "Girl, I gotta go because I gotta get up early." And it was like, "But we can do this again." And in the whole process, Dan, you kept texting and seeing where she was at, and she was like, "No, I can't come because I'm busy." You know, shit like that. Okay, fine. Moving on from that whole thing. Um, anything else happened? To substance with Issa. Issa winds up getting her ass in a fucking car accident, okay? Issa was on the fucking street at a red light behind this car texting, you know, somebody who that was potential bad, okay? So she was on a little app and she was like, yeah, I thought your profile was cute too. He was like, let me show you another picture, all right? And next thing you know, it was a dick pic. Like, it was a full ass dick pic. And I said, bitch, I really didn't need to see this. Issa didn't need to see this because of what happened. I said, y'all be, and that's how niggas be doing shit, you know, from what I be in. Y'all just be dropping dick pics up in people inboxes and don't nobody be asking for them. Issa didn't ask for that dick pic. He just assumed and just said, here's another one. Boop, there it is. Causing accidents and everything, losing lives over dick pics and shit, you know, money and shit. So, um, she gets into this bad accident and... She was supposed to meet up with Daniel, so she had to text Daniel, well, call Daniel and tell him that, you know, she's not going to be able to make it because her car got fucked up. She was in this accident. She's not trying to flake. And he was like, where you at? I'll come get you. And sure, he comes out there and get her. Now, at this moment, I was like, Issa's about to do something because everything with Daniel was just going way too smooth. Way too smooth. I said, Issa, don't fuck this shit up. I mean, go ahead and get yours. You obviously trying to make yourself think that you really over Lawrence and just the way that you're going to go. So at this point in time, go ahead and go get yours. All right. But, um, she going to tell Daniel, 
So, we good, right? You know, we know the situation, right? You know, we both was seeing other people and doing all this stuff, and we just kicking it. I said, Issa, slow down. Don't ruin this shit by putting your foot in your mouth, okay? If he ain't asking about what it is, you don't go in here and offer nothing or whatever, okay? Just go with the flow at this moment, because right now, y'all both on the same track, even though I can see that dad, you might fuck around and want to have something real with her. He was like, uh, yeah, okay. And I couldn't really read that. I couldn't read that and see if he really meant, yeah, okay, I already know. That's what we was on. We was on the same page. Or, I mean, damn, maybe I thought we could have had something where we were kindling something. I don't know. Y'all tell me how y'all feel, okay? But I was like, Issa, shut up and just get in the car with him, okay? And let him go, you know, fuck the bruises off of you or whatever. I don't know. You know? Yeah. Um, Lawrence. Lawrence, <laughs> Lawrence is out jogging with his friends. Like, let me, not his friends, his co-worker. Bitch, I'm so glad me and my co-workers ain't close like this because we ain't finna be going out doing some activities like this and shit. I do not hang out with them. First of all, they older than me. That's a one. And two, just no. All right? But, um, and they not bad or nothing. I just, I'm not social with my, the people I work with like that. No, no, no. We don't do those things. Uh, then he has to call. That Brooke girl... The Brooke girl, the one that came up there and got him when he was on the phone with Tasha after Tasha called him a fuck nigga, okay? She gon' he, I got a feeling they gonna wind up fuck. They gonna wind up fucking. Did y'all get that feeling? Or is it just me? Because I thought they was gonna fuck on that night, okay? Um, so he calls to go see if he has jury duty. And of course, he do has to go to jury duty. And he, while he's waiting to be called and see um, if he's qualified or he's going to be on a jury or whatever, he's sitting there stalking all of, uh, Issa friends, you know, Facebook pages. We see Kelly roll up, Kelly up in here with these goddamn peppers. I said, get your Glozelle ass out of here. <laughs> Kelly is stupid, but I fucking love her. And he gets called. And while the judges, they asking the potential jurors questions to see if they qualified or whatever, you know, if they have any bias towards police officers and all this stuff. When he asked that lady that, she said no. And she stood up and she opened up her shirt, but this, and it said Black Lives Matter. The judge said, nice try, sit your ass down. But, um, you know, what's his name? Lawrence got dismissed. And the whole time he was sitting there on whose page on Facebook? Dang you. I was like, oh, oh. So Lawrence is sitting here. He At one point he was at home looking at his shit too, okay? I said, oh, so now you Facebook stalking and you social media stalking. Dang you, okay? Just like Issa was social media stalking Tasha. Oh, now the roles have reversed, okay? Dang, um, Lawrence, I don't know what stage of grief or whatever this is in a relationship when you break up because I never been in that stage. Um, cause once I'm done, I'm done, you know, and, and if it's like that, that means it really wants shit to me. But, um, so it really wants shit to me. So <laughs> when you see shit like this, I'm sitting here like, damn, um, um, Lawrence, what's going on? You want that boot thing back? So he talking to Derek. Okay. He's sitting down talking to Derek saying, man, damn, I got to think, you know, he, she's still fucking with this nigga or whatever. Like, it's making me think all this time while I'm trying to get my shit together and I'm up in here doing all this stuff with her. I'm thinking we together and we doing this shit together, but she over here fucking with this nigga and all this shit. What if Tiffany would have every, y'all notice that every time when Tiffany is questioned about Derek, she shuts it down real quick. But you went, that uh, episode in season one when they was talking about, um, when they found out that, what's his name? Oh, my, Jared. Jared was, bis well, he wasn't bisexual. He had got his dick sucked by his friend when they was high and drunk, and he didn't like it. And Molly told him, and then um, they was talking about whether men can be gay or bisexual or something like that. And then they was asking Tiffany, so what if Derek was? And she was like, no. It was like, but you mean, no, don't even ask that. No, because he wouldn't, because I know. Couldn't even get the question all the way out before she shut it down. Lawrence did the same thing to Derek, and Derek shut his ass down. What if Tiffany was to, no, it ain't going to happen. So, no. I said, oh, okay, this is the type of shit that y'all got going on. But yet you was out the house for half of the year living in a hotel. What was that about? We, gonna, we need to find out about that one. I really want to find out about that one. But, you know, Lawrence was getting all up in his feelings about the whole thing. But Derek had to give him that real. 
I understand that Issa cheated, and I'm not finna take up for that fact, but I can see why that she went that route. And you acting like you a 100% victim, but you're not. Bruh, you was unemployed for two fucking years, and you were doing nothing, okay? You were bringing nothing to the table. So I can see how she can, you know, find somebody else that's actually doing something and fall for that. I said, come and give him that shit, Derek. He needs that dose of fucking reality. No, it's not right that she cheated, but look... We can understand why, but it's still not right. You know, he had to sit there with that egg on his face. Like, ain't that a bitch? You know? So, the last thing we're going to talk about is fucking Molly. (sighs) Molly goes home to, you know, her father and her mother's house, where they grew up at. They're about to celebrate 35 years being together, being married, you know. And she's taking flowers and things out the car. Dro pops up. You know, he's in town. He came back early and all this stuff. And, you know, they started talking about what happened at the club the night before. And she was like, you know, well, the, when they was at the kiss and grind. And she was like, you know, I'm pretty sure you was drunk. He was like, I want that drunk. So she's just saying, I just can't do that. You know, we just need to stay friends and all that shit. Because, you know, you're married and I respect that and shit like that. Okay, fine. So she getting there. She having this little conversation with her, we see her parents, uh, we see her two brothers, and I just love the fact that they actually incorporate, you know, family ties into this season. You, we see p- their parents, you know, in season one, if y'all didn't know, we saw Easter Mama in the episode where they was at the We Got Y'all thing, and it was the donor that she was talking to when she spotted Daniel. That was her mama, okay? Her real mama in real life. Um, But we saw her brother. Now we see Molly's brothers and her mother and father and their little dynamic is real cute. Okay. Arguing over juices. Daddy giving the baby girl the juice and not giving the boys the juice and all that shit. That was cute. And so when the actual event started, we get all the family members and friends coming in and all of a sudden Lionel was there. I said, bitch, where Lionel come from? Oh, Molly giving him a second chance. Okay. Um... That was cute, and he was all up outside, and Dro looking like, hmm, who the fuck is this? And I said, Dro, get out your feelings. You got a wife, okay? You have a wife. Cut that out. But, you know, they was talking. He was like, yeah, I grew up right across the street. We was good friends and all this shit. Dro parents come up there and everything, and I was like, okay. So this is really a family affair, get-together, reunion, bow renewal, whatever. Now, Molly was out. Everything was going good. Molly was out in the yard talking to some of her family members it was like her great aunts or whatever and you know when you drunk i don't even know if they was drunk but i told y'all old people will open up their mouth at the wrong time sometime and she was out here talking about prior to that her brother came up and was talking to her about you know lionel and was like why you with him because you know you're not really wanting to be with him why and i said are you really settling because molly said you know He's a good dude, you know, and I'm trying to find something like mom. And if I want to go ahead and have what mom and dad have be together for like 35 plus years, you know, I need to just go ahead and jump on the ball. That's when our brother was like, what are you doing this for? You know, you really don't want to be with him. Why are you basically settling, you know, and you really looking up to mom and dad as a relationship goal type of thing when they had their own issues, but he didn't expound on it. So they kind of just let that shit go. But then when she went over there to the aunts and stuff, one of the aunts going to blurt out and say something. He was like, yeah, we over here celebrating 35 years. 35 years? Hell, I didn't even think they was going to make it five years after all the shit that he did to her, put her through and shit. You know, who was it? With that girl? That girl so-and-so and so-and-so. I said, ain't this about a bitch? Leave it to the old people. Did she have some liquor in her system? Because them lips, them lips was loose as fuck, you know? And the other lady with the bone. Um, Blind hell was trying to shut the shit down. Molly put two and two together, went in there, confronted her father and was like, and her mom, you cheated on mom. Mama was like, it was a long time ago. We got through it. But you fucking stayed. And I said, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And so she's in her feelings and she's upset at this point that she wants to leave. All right. And Lionel just looking confused as to Lionel and Dro was standing there like, who's going to go after her? Because I guess Lionel felt like it really wasn't his place because they're not really together like that yet. But Dro was like, I got it. I got it. And he's like, okay, I'll just meet you because she wasn't talking to nobody. And I said, oh, my God. 
Molly gonna fuck this boy. <laughs> Molly is gonna fuck this boy, okay? And, you know, they in the car talking about the whole thing. And and he's very apologetic and trying to be that person. Like, trying to be her friend. But you know that friend that wanna fuck, you know? And I said, please, Molly, do not use this as a reason to give in to temptation. And it's temptation for the simple fact, regardless of the fact that he said that they are in an open marriage. I would not feel comfortable fucking my friend, okay? And I know his wife and we are kids. I mean, um, friends too. We are good friends too, okay? If it was a stranger or somebody I just met, I didn't know the, a spouse or whatever like that, I, fine, I would have been okay with that. You know, go ahead and do what you do. They said open marriage ain't no feelings going to be hurt because, you know, y'all really, but everybody know each other. And it seems like Dro got deeper feelings, okay? And that is what's fucking this shit up for me. And that's why I can't get around it. And I'm like, Molly, deep down, you got feelings for Dro too, okay? That's what it seemed like too. And this is going to get messy, all right? They going to wind up, what? Is him, him and Candace going to get a divorce because he ain't going to want her no more or whatever? Like, I'm just, uh, because he was about, she was about to go in because he drove her car. He said, I'll get an Uber. And then at one point she was going to go in. She turned around, grabbed him. Next thing you know, they fucking. And I said, oh, shit. No, Molly. I said, God damn. I was so disappointed. I was like, fuck, if you want to fuck some dick, random dick, just get Lionel. And it's just a deeper connection. That's what it is because it's feelings involved. And that's what's fucking with me. Like, they they playing with, you're playing with fire right now, okay? Y'all tell me how y'all felt about this, that whole situation, situation, situation with Molly and Ly um at the end. Y'all tell me, were y'all here for it? Do you get where I'm coming from as to why I did not want them to do this and step over this line? I just feel like a boundary has been broken, a line has been crossed that they cannot come back from. You know, because it's feelings there. But y'all tell me how y'all feel, and I will see you guys tomorrow. Peace.